today we are at Donnybrook for the second semi-final of the Bank of Ireland Leinster School Senior Cup between Belvedere College and St Michael's College. Belvedere have made it to the semi-finals with a good win over Newbridge in the first round, then two titanic battles with Black Rock in the quarter-final. We thought the drawn game was good, but the, that replay proved to be even better. Cistercian College are already through, so a Belvedere win will set up a repeat of last year's finale. St. Michael's were beaten at the quarter-final stage last year and have arrived in the semis a little bit under the radar. Solid wins over St. Andrews and Terenure, 25-7 and 29-14 respectively, showing that this side has the ability to pile up the scores. Can they contain the Belvedere backline? That could be the deciding factor this afternoon. Hi, I'm John Forrest. Alongside me, at ever, as ever, for expert analysis, is former Toulouse and Leinster back row, Aidan McCullen. Aidan, St. Michael's, we haven't seen a lot of them so far this year, but they do look very powerful. They're very powerful. And looking at the size of them, we've been watching them warming up. Huge pack, and when they click, they can be really, really dangerous. And they did a lot of damage through fullback and captain Jack Kelly in the last, uh, last uh, match. Well, during the week, we sent cameras down to St. Michael's to see how preparations were going. I think the ethos in St Michael's is a very special one. We're rooted in the spirit and educational tradition, which brings with it a very rich and diverse heritage. It's very much a holistic uh, model that they have put into their schools, where young men are educated over the period of their life, right up to the age of 18 and 19, where young, autonomous men go out into the world with a very broad, diverse view and a global vision of where they would like to go and what contribution they would like to make to society. The spirit and educational tradition is a very unique one and a very special one, and one that we treasure and that we protect and that we promote. We already have a, a state-of-the-art gym. I, I think it's one of the best school gyms in Ireland. We've also got a swimming pool. We have 19 different teams across um, four different age grades. Um, so there's a lot that goes into that. I mean, we're delighted to be in the mix. All the teams that have left are really, really strong. And, and we've got to focus on our own game, stick to what we believe, and you know, keep, uh, keep bringing a little chisel to, to a wall, and hopefully that will come down in front of us. We're just happy to be in the mix, and we're going to hopefully tear up the pitch if we can. We see sport as very much part of the, the overall development of young men, uh, as we do our arts and our music and our drama. And the diversity of what we offer here is very much part of that development and that holistic development of the young men as they come through to the age of 18. It would mean a lot to us to win the cup for a few of us our last year. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice to end off to finish the school with the win. Uh, if St Michael's won the cup, I'd feel absolutely ecstatic and over the moon would be great. They complement each other very, very well, and I suppose in the sporting context. They, they make great memories of your education and the, what happens with those individual events becomes the type of memories that you build and you, you remember the days leading up to them and in and around them and how they went and that's that's across the school not just for the players that goes from you know the first year who's cheering in the stands to the to the staff member who who just likes to go to the games and see the boys do well to our past pupils who arrive to the games it brings us together it's like the glue of the school well, they're certainly all set uh, down on Merrion Road. Aidan, let's turn our attention to Belvedere College. Two titanic battles, as I said, against Black Rock College. You think that will stand to them coming into this game? Absolutely. The longer you can play together in a, in a cup campaign like this, the more you gel, and that will really stand to them. I think they got they probably scored a, a little few too easy tries. They got around to the Black Rock defence a little bit too easy with those long floated passes, and they certainly won't get through them today. Well, we also risk sending a camera north of the river. Let's see how they're preparing in Belvedere College for this game. It's a very strong ethos in the college. If you were to ask the boys, I'd say most of the students would say it's about being a man for others. The benefit of being a city centre location is our population is drawn from all over the, the city and from North County Dublin particularly, so you get a very big mix in the college. What we can term academic success is doing your personal best. What we encourage all students to do is to find what is uh, their passion, what is something that gives them life, what energises them.
We're here at the, on the roof and the astro pitch, so we're right smack in the middle of the city. It's often an advantage to be able to use this maybe of a, a dark winter's evening to come up here and do a little bit of work very quickly. Well, if you walk down the 60-year corridor, yes, you will see signs up saying about our semi-finals on, on Thursday. You will also see signs up for the, the French debating final. The lads will be mutually supportive of that. Whatever students decide to do, um, we're incredibly well supported. And the school offers so many uh, different activities and um, things, to, things to get involved in. Support for the for rugby in the schools, brilliant. Couldn't ask for more. You know, everyone goes to the games. Um, majority of the schools there, everyone has is wearing their black and whites on the day of the matches. A fine bunch of lads, every one of them. I would often say to parents, if they see their son playing in one of these matches, that's what they'll talk about in 20 years' time. Maybe not to leave it. You know, no side's ever perfect. We still have a lot to work on. We still have a lot of areas we can improve on. I'll get back to the coaches, and you know, they've identified a few areas that we can address and that we can look to soft them. So uh, I won't reveal too much anyway. I'd say to every kid who takes the field, not just the Belvedere lads, they're all winners. You know, they will learn by the experience and they will grow. That's what a school is for teaching them experience and getting them to grow. Well, all the supporters are ready, the two colleges are ready. St. Michael's are just heading towards the changing room. Do join us after the break, where we'll have team news and full coverage of this semi-final. The Bank of Ireland Leinster School Senior Cup Final, live on Satanta Sports. I am calm, cold, moodless, and ready to take out the body that's in front of me. I will be a ghost in there. He will think I'm there, and then I am not there. I will strike him with every limb, the knee, the heel, the fist, the elbow. I recognize a weak target, and I shut the lights out. They go down as the greatest of all time. You need to put them away in devastating fashion every single time. It's my time to shine. Wagamama, fresh and delicious Japanese-inspired food. Find your flavor at Wagamama today. Why not go salty and sweet with our teriyaki beef soba or creamy and mild with our chicken rice ukari? We've also got a full range of juices bursting with flavor and freshly made just for you. Clean green for your pre-workout power, blueberry spice and all things nice, pour juice for that mid-morning kick and many more. Wagamama, South King Street, Blanchardstown, Dundrum and South Main Street Cork. Fantasy Lights Home and Garden. From stylish bathroom lighting to design lighting for the kitchen, as well as a unique range of garden lighting. Experience our amazing chandeliers in our large fittings department or check out our LED range for energy saving and color. We provide a free design service and an installation service where required. For Ireland's largest range of lighting, Fantasy Lights Home and Garden. Call us now on 01 460 1052 or visit fantasylights.com. Say cheese! Hi, you must be... Steve and Rachel. Mm, Rachel and Steve. We're Steve and Rachel. We live next door. We're super close. We hope you like death metal. We promise we'll keep it down. <laughs> Just kidding! Ooh. Steve and Rachel. Rachel and Steve. It's, it's Steve and Rachel. Rachel and Steve. At Bank of Ireland, we've now extended our offer of 2% cash back on your mortgage until June 30th, 2016. That's just our way of saying welcome. Now that's a mortgage with a difference. The ultimate boys rugby summer camp. 16 years in operation. Recommended by professional stars Luke Fitzgerald, JJ Hanrahan and many others. There's French lessons, surfing, sailing, hiking and conditioning. All part of the trip of a lifetime. If rugby is your passion and you want to improve no matter what your level, visit our website rugbyandfrench.com.
For the next step on your education journey, Stillorgan College of Further Education offers courses in digital film, web design, animation, gaming, journalism, art, photography, multimedia, tourism, and many other courses designed to give you the essential skills for today's jobs. Our QQI certified courses also offer a route to many degree courses in universities and institutes of technology through the Higher Education Link Scheme. Whether you're looking to upskill, retrain, or progress to further studies, Stillorgan College is your one-stop shop. Enroll now at stillorgancollege.ie. The all-new Skoda Superb Range. Skoda, simply clever. The Bank of Ireland Leinster School Senior Cup Final, live on Satanta Sports. You're very welcome back to Donnybrook, Bank of Ireland, Leinster School Senior Cup semi-final. It's Belvedere College against St. Michael's College. Kickoff is coming up in just a few moments. The rain has begun to fall at Donnybrook after a beautiful morning here. This is a little bit of a pity. There's plenty of umbrellas up behind the goals at either end. On our side, though, we're well undercover. The two sets of supporters are in fine voice, waiting for their sides to come out of the changing rooms. So let's take a quick look at the teams. Belvedere College are unchanged from the last time. Brian Egan, captains from the second row, where he is partnered by Hugh Fenlon. Number eight, Tom de Jong, was among the try scorers against Blackrock. Daniel McCaffrey and Keen Galvin in the front row scored three tries between them in round one. Porrick Cagney and David Hawkshaw are the halfbacks. They are real, they're real threats across the three-quarters line, with Hugh O'Sullivan, also a danger, joining the line from fullback or on the counter-attack. St. Michael's make one change from the starting side in their quarter-final. Jeff O'Loughlin came off the bench that day, but starts on the left wing today. Jack Kelly captains at fullback from where he scored two first-half tries against Terran Ewer. St. Michael's have a tough and mobile pack. Their fitness will be well tested today. Barry Fitzpatrick at number eight has scored a try in each round so far. He is ably assisted in the back row by Ushin Dowling and Scott Penny. While Belvedere replacements weren't overused against Black Rock, Jesse Iredale, James Kenny and Fergus Flood were introduced. All the St. Michael subs have seen action in the campaign so far. Dan O'Donovan getting on the score sheet with a try against St. Andrews. Here come the Belvedere side. Led out by their captain, Brian Egan. Last game this season for them at Donnybrook. A final awaits for one side, Aiden. Who do you fancy? It's a tough one to call, John. We were talking about this before, and Michaels, uh, if they gel, can be magic. I, I think they, they probably lack a bit of fitness that the Belvo pack have. They're a bit more cohesive, a bit more mobile, and that could come into play today. But with this w rain coming down, the, the weather will have a, a, an aspect to play as well because people will want to keep it tighter. And that distribution we saw from Hawkshaw at 10 and Sexton at 12 from Belvedere will be under threat if the rain continues. And presumably the two coaches watch the other games back or they go along and see the games. Will either, do you think either coach will change their tactics coming into this? I think ju just in particular, uh, Michaels will have a, had a look at how Belvedere got around that defence because the, the distribution from 10 and 12 on the Belvedere side was fantastic and it caused havoc for the Black Rock, uh, Black Rock defence and that will be severely looked at from the Michaels coach. Well, the two back lines have reined in tries so far in the competition this year. If they get the ball moving, it could be an absolutely cracking game. Yeah, and we've been really spoiled with this uh, with, with the season so far, and uh, the, the, the skill levels of these teams have just got so, so good. And watching Michaels warming up as well before the rain started, nice little interplay between backs and forwards, nice little top passes between the forwards. And you just didn't see that at schools rugby 10 years ago. It's really good, a credit to the coaches and, and a cr credit to the academies. Yeah, there's certainly great ball handling skills all across the 15 and all out to the, the 23. When you include the benches, we've seen subs when they're introduced just slot in without any difficulty whatsoever. There's great depth in the squads. St. Michael's supporters doing their best to lift their team and there is the St. Michael's team. All those on the line 
Yeah, good man, yeah. Try and keep them on, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man. St. Michael's just going through their last preparations. Belvedere lined up. John Carvel is today's match referee. Chris, you're going to tell me when I can go? The TV say I can go? Oh, just checking with our producer right. that everything is okay to go. And we're all set. The two teams look all set. The referee is ready. The supporters are on their feet, making incredible noise. I'm finding it here. hard to hear myself. And it's just kickoff time. Game underway. Deep to the 22. Safe take. And St. Michael's move the ball through the hands. First opportunity. Using Kelly in the line from fullback, Oshin Dowling had a big game in the quarter-final, just about held, great hands from Jack Dunn to hold on to the loose ball. Belvedere defence is realigned, St. Michael's kick for the corner, that's a big strong kick, which side is it going to go? Just straightens a little bit, is it going to go all the way dead? Yes it is. There's just not enough in the artificial pitch to take a stick out of the band, Aiden. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's great to see what Michael's just did. A nice little play at the start and having a go. But you, I, I'm always a fan of John just settling the nerves at the start of the game. Get that ball. Great, fantastic take from Fitzpatrick for Michael's. Just settle the nerves, get it out of touch, get it down into Belvedere territory. And instead, now they're in, in a defensive position and in ideally an ideally attacking position for Belvedere. Yeah, out at the 10 metre line, but a central position. Belvedere have options to go either way. You can just see on the left hand side of your screen, though. They're sending all the troops to the right hand side. Expect to see a switch move here, maybe, Aiden. Yeah, we saw it the last day actually from Belvedere, a switch down the blind side. Our backs are so good, their handling is so good. Come forward and take the pressure. Yeah, come forward and take the pressure. Don't. No hit and chase. Okay, a little bit closer, please, as well. A touch too far away. No head. No head. No head. Clear instructions from the referee, John Carvel, to the two front rows. There'll be a lot of adrenaline pumping out there. All the referees want really is a clean big shove from St. Michael's. Can't really go more than a metre in schools rugby. Oh, a little reverse pass. Bringing Tom de Jong onto the loose ball. And the ball a little bit scrappy. Poor Cagney under all sorts of pressure. Does well to protect and present the ball. Keen Galvin has a little pick and drive. Hold, hold. First chance for Belvedere to have some possession. Looking to suck in some defenders. Surge now. They come the other direction. No way through. Now is the room to open things up here. Good offload out of the tackle. Clever kick through. Good grubber kick finds a good touch. That was a great kick by Jennings. A nice little play again. We saw. Nice little offload between the forwards into the space every single time. And what's really impressive about this Belvedere side is they're so intelligent that the clean out, they're taking out the right players to create fastball for the scrum half. But a really important kick there from Jennings before he got tackled. St. Michael's shortened to a four man line out. Win the ball comfortably. And they go to the big man Jack Dunn once again has failed uh, there's a little bit more space good on rushing attack and a great clearance to touch James McKeown underneath attempted to take the quick line out decided against I think it was a wise choice that's a great clearance Aiden really good clearance and again his forwards creating him that angle off the off the line out you set the and line, he set executed you. it perfectly and this is the position that they did so well from yeah I got that Belvedere in the last round against Black Rock. They got around the back line so easily, and you can actually see the Michaels players lining up that little bit wider. They'll certainly have done their video analysis, as I think it's Tom de Young has a bloody nose that needs to be clean. Yeah, ten. Oh, he took a bang just above the nose, I think. Off a line out, just watch you pushing up. Yeah, on their line out. Don't go early. Keep an eye on the touch judge. He'll get you. Yeah. Referee just off camera was having a word. He comes to check the injured player now. The medical staff looking after him. Just had a word off camera about Belvedere creeping up at the lineout. Their head coach Phil Wurahiko looking on. 
And that's Phil happy, is it? <laughs> He's ecstatic there, John. Clock is still off, boys. Clock is still off. Clock is still off. We're just trying to start a blood injury here. So still a delay. Tom De Jong receiving attention. That's okay, yeah. And Keen Galvin there, the hooker, ready to throw to the line out. And he did a fantastic uh, quarterfinal, Tom De Jong. He certainly got his a big game in for himself against Fitzpatrick, who had a phenomenal quarterfinal. He good? And really showboated what he's he's capable of. Scrappy ball from the line out, but Belvedere secure possession. Cagney goes short, a little pop pass. Worked out nicely, but it went loose, not knocked on. The ball was ripped. Belvedere get the ball back. Jennings has a little dart. Ball has gone loose in the tackle. This time it is a knock on. It was one each way, so no advantage allowed to accrue. Here we just see the, the break. He goes for the break. Hawkshaw was just because the defense was up so fast that he couldn't give that pass out, but he saw a little gap and unfortunately just and, and it's one of the things with this surface that you have to when you go to place the ball, you don't have that kind of deadening aspect of the pitch. You need to be a bit more careful with your ball placement, particularly when it's a bit greasy like this. Yeah, Hawkshaw will be watched carefully by St. Michaels. He scored a try in each of the games against Blackrock. Well, little breaks like that when he spotted the gap. Not just a number 10 who can kick, he can run and pass as well. St. Michael's moved the ball off the base of the scrum. Good feet. And they get across the halfway line. Jack Kelly into the line to great effect. And they move the ball the other direction. Have they created some space here? Belvedere players quick to get back the right side of the ball. Ryan Baird spinning out of one tackle, but brought to ground just on halfway. Then it come back. Tomas Colleen got the pass away. Byrne moved it on. And Oshin Dowling, another man who had a great game in the quarterfinal. Big strong runner. Byrne pulls the ball behind too. Well, that's gone just behind James Hickey. The referee decided it went backwards. He was having a check with the touch judge here. Yeah, they're happy to allow play go on. Well, oh, no, they're not. They're coming back for the knock on. I think that's the correct decision. And you can see that they're they're getting there, Michaels. They're getting through the phases. And this is what we talked about. If they click between forward and back interplay, they can be deadly. And we, you mentioned Oshin Dowling, and he had a fantastic quarter final as well, along with Fitzpatrick. Sometimes uh, indistinguishable with their headbands. And just unfortunate there. And that's that slippy ball, but also the pass cutting off his uh, his running line a little bit. Well, St. Michael's send uh, Tomas Colleen into the number eight slot, their scrum half in the scrum. You can really see the power of that Michael's pack. Okay, blue one, keep your feet underneath your body, don't go under the car. This man will tell me, yeah? Here we go. If you go after that's okay, but keep the feet underneath it. The referee just speaking there to Ronan Kelleher, the loose head prop. Just lost his footing. Ready, ready, ready. Stay on back rows, hold. Use it. Dion controlling the ball at the base, picks now, gets it away to Cagney. McKeown unable to wriggle his way through with the ball away quickly to Senna McNulty. Cagney rips it out, moves it in field quickly. Big tackle comes in from Barry Fitzpatrick, but Belvedere get the ball away of them in wide here. Just got the uh, wrong men in the wrong place there. Needed to get to the speed merchants quickly. They have an opportunity now. It's Michael's defensive lineup really, really quickly. Wise to that threat, but there's an opportunity here. A little sniping run from Cagney, the scrum half. The ball's been stolen though, he got a little bit isolated. Fitzpatrick, the first one to it. Great steal. St. Michael's turnover. They have an advantage as well. The 
Ramos Kalin, the scrum half, back to his feet, but he sends the instruction to the forwards to control the ball. Just get a more solid platform. And get the ball back to burn. Has a huge boot. We've seen that already. Has he found touch? And he's found a very good touch and good to put it into the crowd as well to stop the quick line out. Absolutely. You can see Belvedere as well looking for that. They know what they're good at it. And we just saw glimpses of, of that. They're so fast with the rook out. And you can see this little break here. That's the clean out. No pillar there for Michaels to shore up the defense. But great work back in defense. I think it was Kelly who did the damage. He got his hands on the ball. And just second fractions of seconds too late great win on the line out by belvedere looking to set up a rehearsed move in midfield st michael's are aware of the threat the gate closed really quickly all of the little miss move beautifully worked by belvedere is this an opportunity for the first goal back inside beautiful hands beautiful work and james mcgown goes over for the try well he was at the start of the move and he was there to finish it off Brilliant, brilliant work by Belvedere, and that's the threat they bring to this game, Aiden. Absolutely, and what a move straight off the training paddock. And Phil Rarahiko, I know he won't show up, but he'll be very happy with that. Look at this again. Really fast move, really fast rook ball. Nice clean out. Scrum House happy with that. Nice little swipe. Dummy, dummy wrap. And McKeown on his bike and then drops back. And he's done that so, so well. Perfect try. Yeah, great head by Hugh O'Sullivan as well. Knew the best option, the best chance of the try was to commit the defender and put the ball back in field to McKeown. Might have been tempted to go for the corner. Probably would have scored, but he's made the conversion easier by doing that as well. Yeah, and it's great It's great to see that selflessness of, of looking for space and, and making credit for other players around you. McKeown did really well. And great to see players working off the ball as well. Like So they're not just giving the pass and that's their job done. They're looking for work. They're looking how they can be effective to the team again. Well, Belvedere under a little bit of pressure here. Off you go. You're, you're in line where the ball was, was good. Connor yep. Jennings was receiving some attention. He's the place kicker. I'm fine, thank you. He's taken it just outside the 22. 15 metres and a little bit in from the touchline. Nice angle for a right-footed kicker. St. Michael's ready to charge as soon as Jennings moves. Here he goes, sends it on its way. Oh, that's a very good strike through the uprights and Belvedere stretched the lead to seven. That will do his confidence, the world of good. And he did it the last day, John, as well in the repeat quarterfinal. He has given that a huge welly and there was lots more in it. We can see that he's capable of kicking from halfway. Belvedere College 7, St. Michael's College nil, and that's a bit of a blow. St. Michael's were had the stronger the opening 10 minutes. But Belvedere with the line break, with the penetration, get the first score. Struggling to get out of their own 22 here. Have they knocked the ball on? Certainly got a foot in touch. This is what we were talking about, John, earlier on as well. You can be, you can overplay your exit play. So your exit play is when you're trying to get the ball out of your danger zone. There, we just saw an example of it. You're better off just getting that ball secured. If you're in a good position that's given a good angle to the, your number 10, just let them clear the ball. Do the simple things well. Seconds. Well, Belvedere have put themselves under a little bit of pressure here. Scrum for St. Michael's on the 22 meter line, five meters in from this near touch line. No blindside option. They go in field. Lovely little show and go back from Burn into the hands of Jeff O'Loughlin. Pop pass short. St. Michael's drive forward. Belvedere repel that attack into the hands of Fitzpatrick, the number eight. Great strength from him. Eventually brought to ground. Went slightly sideways, but St. Michael's can come the other way. Back to Dowling this time. Tackle is made. Release White. Told. Belvedere told to release. Killeen gets the ball away. Lovely soft pass to Ryan Baird who took the pass. Has this created the space for St. Michael's this time. On comes Scott Penny. The open side. Two or three metres short of the line. 
St. Michael's looking to compete numbers. Belvedere get in and get toast to the ball. But they haven't done so legally. Out of the way. Yep. Not rolling away. Was it Hugh Fenlon was the one indicated the second row? Great to see the Michaels pack there. There we see the power of that pack. We saw carries from Fitzpatrick at Aiden Dowling. They're two key ball carriers there at a really effective quarter final. And there we're seeing what they're capable of again. And then that's, that man Penny scored a fantastic try in the last round. And he does the damage. Did well on the ground as well with the ball placement, making sure it was against the Belvedere player who was lying offside, just to make sure the referee spotted it. Short little chip through the post for the penalty. Harry Byrne makes no mistake. And a good response from St. Michael's Belvedere. Disappointed to concede a score so quickly. Yeah, and it's going back to that. The simple thing was to secure the ball from the kickoff, which they did, and, and then get the ball back into enemy territory. And they didn't do that, and they paid the price. Andy Skeen looking on. Looking very, very thoughtful. The happiest side are on the scoreboard. Belvedere seven, St. Michael's three. Well, that's kick sliced yeah. back in field. Underneath it is Hugh O'Sullivan. Can be dangerous with ball in hand. Moves it on. The tackle came up quickly. Has it created a little bit of space? Cagney thought about the little sniping run. Got the ball away to Galvin. The tackle came in quickly. Whistle blows. Penalty, St. Michael's. Fantastic work by James Hickey. He was right in on the ball, talking to the referee. Well, you see this. Look at this. Second man in. Very, very clean. And although the Belvedere players tried to place, it was just a little bit too late. And there's a little bit of momentum sneaking into the Michaels game now. Yeah, a good penalty from the hand by Harry Byrne. Takes play. 10 metres outside the Belvedere, 22. St. Michael supporters are the ones making the most noise right now. But Belvedere get up and steal the line out at the front. Oh, the ball squirts out. Cagney under a little bit of pressure. Good strength from him though to protect the ball. the box kick away safe take by the fullback Kelly big athletic strong running fullback wouldn't be out of place in the pack Ryan Bear the second row moving the ball on with a pop pass Burn has dropped into the pocket to send one up for his chasers swirling around a bit in the breeze O'Sullivan safe catch gets away that's the pass to McKeown Straight into a big tackle from Ronan Keller. Well, St. Michael's really defending on the front foot here. Maybe an opportunity for Belvedere to get the ball wide. This is where they're really dangerous. All the way out to the wing. Little skip pass. St. Michael's get across and make the tackle. Perhaps Belvedere a little bit too anxious to get the ball all the way wide on that occasion. Didn't commit any defenders. Yeah, just a bit lateral from them, just going through the phases. And Michaels has just run out of numbers for a second. And no better players to take advantage. Just a bit lateral there, easy to defend in the end, but still important tackle by Heaney. St. Michael's line out on their own 10 metre line. Was it straight? Referee happy enough. Good take by Ushin Dowling. Ball quickly into midfield. Nice wraparound move. Kelly in the line from fullback. Again, trying to dance his way out of trouble. Can't get away from the tacklers. Hawkshaw did well. Belvedere's defensive line just slightly disorganised. We had lined up a little bit better now. Dowling with the carry once again. But St. Michael's in fringe on the line, on the ground. The steel was okay, hands on the ground. There we saw glimpses of Jack Kelly, who had to be player of the match in the, for Michael's in the quarterfinal. But uh, when he sees space, he really goes for it. He's a dynamic runner, he's very, very strong on the ball. You can just see his hunger 
to run with the ball and get it in his hands. Jennings has found a good touch at the 22. Difficult angle for the right-footed kicker. There we see Dowling again carrying. Just players coming in. Well, Belvedere through to the back, failed to hold on to it. Quickness to react was Jack Dunn. Makes good ground. Burn moving the ball on, comes back in field. Well, oh, had it, Dowling hold on to it. Didn't quite hold on to it enough. Bobbled off a Belvedere player, and that means it's a knock on. And, and had Michaels looked outside, there was that man again. Kelly was lurking, waiting for that ball in front of him to invite him on. Just there, you can see his legs just on the outside. And had that ball gone out there, Belvedere could have been in trouble. But anyway. Play will restart Belvedere scrimmage. Halfway between the 22 and the halfway line. Shrill blast of the whistle. St. Michael's pulling down the scrum. Referee spoken to Ronan Kelleher at an earlier scrummage. Penalty goes against him. And this is a kickable chance for Connor Jennings. We see the replay. Yeah, you're good. Where the mark wall is, yeah. Very achievable for Jennings. We saw the last kick, he had yes. plenty of legs in it. What you do is off line outs, you need to tell your 10 that he needs to hold until the line is over. Okay. On defensive line outs, on his, ten, on, his, on his defensive line outs, he needs to hold that 10 metres okay. until the line is over. Make sure he knows that, yeah. You might just watch there, one stick and just find that squad. No, we'll, here we are. Yeah, okay. Sneaky little reminder there from Brian Egan. John Carvel dealing with it very well, pointed out, well, you have a penalty for it. You can't complain too much. And he was just pointing out that Belvedere may be creeping up on line outs a little bit too early. They have to stay back on the defensive side until the line out is over. Jennings with the chance to stretch this lead. Sends it on its way. It's another mighty thump. It's another one perfect for direction as well. That one seemed to be still going up, Aiden, as it crossed the line. Absolutely. He's got so much legs in those kicks. Very respectful crowd. It's good to hear as well, John, you know, from both, both sets of supporters there. The Michaels, Michaels school doing themselves credit and respecting the kicker. Well, St. Michaels will be very disappointed at that the scrum looks solid the scrum looks probably stronger than Belvedere colleges but to concede a penalty that causes a loss of three points at scrum time it's just a slip they can't really afford kick doesn't find touch well taken a low down did well to avoid the knock on ball now moved to Fitzpatrick hitting the tackle oh it almost popped up for a counter-attack opportunity the gate was closed really quickly St. Michael's alert when they had to be Galvin comes in to act as the scrum half. Over. Well, great strong running in midfield by Belvedere College up to halfway. A little reverse pass used once again. St. Michael's just falling off a couple of tackles have conceded some ground here. Belvedere up to the 22. Cagney there to move it in field. This is good play from Belvedere. Have they conceded the ball here though? Well, just about Belvedere support players get there in time to get St. Michael's off their feet. Was that illegal blocking? It created a bit of an overlap here. Out to McKeown, the try scorer. Wisely goes back in field. There was a lot of blue shirts. Had drifted across to form the defensive line. St. Michael's have reorganized. Max Carney tackled hard just outside the 22. The ball squirts loose. Belvedere players quickly there to secure possession. Again, lovely hands. Hawkshaw skips out of one tackle. Was there a foot in touch? Yes, the touch judge's flag is up. Oh, it was Connor Jennings, his 13 looks awful like a 10. They do, don't they? And I think he used to play a 10 actually, but he plays very much that way. Great ball handling skills, great offload and distribution. And there's that man we said earlier on, Max Kearney. He's had a great game today, some great carries, but nice little pop there on that occasion. I'm very unlucky not to keep that ball in. Not forward by White from the line out. It's a knock forward. It's advantage for 
St. Michael's, if they need it, they've cleared and found a good touch. Advantage over is the call from the referee. So Belvedere have come out of this one okay. Yeah, they'll get another bite at the cherry here. But we just, one, one of the things, what, what I found with Belvedere is the coach, Phil Wereko, has just backed them to play, and they back themselves. They, they will go through the pass, even if it's a bit risky, but it actually looks like they've practiced those passes. Ball won well at the back of the line. This looks like a well-rehearsed move as well in the hands of Daniel McCaffrey. Two tries for him so far in the campaign. A little switch of direction. Carney held up four metres short. There's a little bit of space there. Is it over for the try? Yes, it is. Belvedere get the second try. A little bit of space opened up. And it looks like poor Rick Cagney has crept through the smallest of gaps. And got over the line. Good finish from him. Great opportunist opportunism. Absolutely, Johnny. We'll just see again the clean out. It's so key. Carney, that man we talked about. Great carry from him. Good clean out. Nobody at home in the rook. And Cagney's there to take full advantage. Yeah, sliding between Ryan Baird and Barry Fitzpatrick. Two huge men. But he just had enough momentum. And enough pace to get through the line. Jennings with the conversion attempt two from two so far. And this one just slightly harder for the right-footed kicker. But he's inside 15 metres. He's maybe 20 metres in from the touchline. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Jennings steps up now, shifts that through, makes that look very, very easy indeed. There's a lot of pressure out there, and the two uprights look quite narrow to the kickers, you can be sure, but Belvedere are out to a 14-point lead. Belvedere College 7, St. Michael's 3, following Cagney's try and Jennings' conversion. Accidentally. Accidentally offside into your own man scrum blue ball. Another error from Belvedere College on the restart. They've conceded possession near their own 22. Sorry, sorry. The last time it cost them three points. Such a, a, a killer of a penalty or, or a, a possession to give away from an accidental offside. The player is slightly in front of you when you catch the ball and you touch them. And that's illegal. Michaels get a chance in good territory. Back to the feet of Barry Fitzpatrick. Killeen moves it infield to burn. Skip one on the line to Jack Kelly, their fullback. Look at that for strength. On he goes. Great effort. Still try, desperately trying to get the ball back. He does into the hands of Scott Penny. Penny stopped in his tracks. Hold, hold. Hold, hold your line. St. Michael's go back in field. This time to Ryan Baird. Takes a bit of stopping. The referee shouts the tackle is made. Belvedere have to release. Jack Dunn with a surge. This is where St. Michael's are very strong. Up front they can try and bash and biff Belvedere College out of the way. It's all about patience and it's all about strength and fitness. A little reverse move now. Have they created the space for Kelly? Kelly looks to run around on the outside. Almost gets to the line. Huge effort by the fullback. Belvedere competing for the ball, they're off their feet now. Not rolling away, penalty awarded. The referee stops the clock, he wants a word of the Belvedere captain. We've had two issues where we're very close to line, one here, one here. Yes, sir. Where the ball, the tackler is very slow to move. Okay. Make the tackle get out of the way immediately. Yes, sir. Make sure they know. Yes, sir. We're starting with a penalty here. Okay. Well, he didn't quite say, next time I'll have to go to the uh, pockets of us, the referee's term, I'll have to escalate the, yeah. <laughs> the, pen the punishment. Escalate it to the pocket. Right. And Michaels really have to take advantage. There we saw Captain taking things into his own hands. So, so close. And there we saw the players just not rolling away after the tackle. A little bit lazy. 
Yes, St. Michael's win the possession from the line out. Belvedere, though, get great body position. They've driven St. Michael's way back. St. Michael's have secured the possession. Here they come again. Go back. Killeen goes short. Again, Belvedere up quickly to make those tackles. Great strength on the impact. Michael's move it a little bit wider. James Hickey, hold to the ground, but he's made a bit of an advance. Russian Dowling takes the short pass, can't wriggle his way through. Belvedere player trying his best to get out of the way. Once he's making an effort, the referee is probably happy enough. Jack Dunn stopped on that occasion. It's fast and furious. Have they created the space out wide? Harry Byrne decides to go himself. Has he sucked in enough defenders? Scott Penny has done on his shoulder, unable to drive their way towards the trial line. They'll have a pick and go. The big man, Ronan Callagher, gets a few metres closer to the line. Dunn has another surge. Belvedere players driven off the ball. St. Michael's patient, catch their breath. They can go either side here. You, you see the base of the upright. Desperate defence from Belvedere College. This is energy sapping stuff. The ball moved a little bit wider now. It just fizzed off the turf. It needed to go through the hands. St. Michael's were desperate to get it wide quickly. I don't know if it was the right option. Belvedere cover seemed to be pretty solid there. Yeah, and they, they, uh, okay, they were making effort, making inroads through the pack and to go so wide like that, a big long floated pass, skipping out your advantage because they're actually just playing towards the touchline and playing into the defence's hands. Here we'll just see it again. Just a bit of panic here. The ball going to nobody. They'll be disappointed at that. Well, the clock has stopped. There's a Belvedere college player receiving some attention in front of the goalposts. You know, John, we talked about this before the game. When Michael's click, they are unstoppable. But it, we've just seen this kind of fragmented approach sometimes where you, it's fits and starts. But And if they can be a cohesive in their attack, like very much like the Belvedere team, that's what's got them to this semi-final. They were fantastic in both quarter-final efforts, and they really deserved this semi-final berth. Daniel McCaffrey back on his feet. We're ready to take his place. The ball went to touch, but it was knocked on into touch, so Belvedere College have taken the scrum. Right, they're going to try and move the ball in field here. There's no sign of the uh, scrum half standing deep, or the, foot, the out half standing deep for the clearance with the boot. Worked out okay. Box kick comes. Good clearance. Finds touch. Yeah, well worked out of defence by Belvedere. Yeah, much cleaner as well. Not trying to force the passes. Not going through phases for the sake of it and increasing the risk. Well, the clock has ticked past 30 minutes. It's hard to believe Belvedere College leading 17 points to three. But St. Michael's with possession, looking to get something more on the scoreboard before the break. Scott Penny tackled. Belvedere don't commit, compete for the ball. Second row's work, Ryan Baird with a pop-up pass to Jack Dunn. St. Michael's go through the hands once again. Harry Byrne popped the pass, received it back. Fitzpatrick in the line as well. He gets it away to Michael Heaney. St. Michael's now, they created an overlap wide here. Scott Penny, can he get the ball released from the tackle? Decides not to risk. A hopeful pass, kept the ball in possession, sets up another platform. Jack Dunn charging into tackles. But Belvedere got over and got their hands on the ball, no. The referee asking Belvedere to get their hands off it. St. Michael's come back to the narrower side. Dowling to Penny, good hands from the flankers. We're into the Belvedere 22 now. It's patient play by St. Michael's. Nice offload again, but Tuck Belvedere in, wide to, wise to the threat. Snuff out that attack. Killeen gets it away to burn once more. Long pass wide. Belvedere just seemed to have plenty of numbers. The defense is very well organized. 
St. Michael's come once again. They're lining up wide on this left-hand side. Belvedere do their best to get across. Have they made enough of the tackle? The ball is loose, almost hacked downfield, finds its way to touch. Well, anything could have happened there, but the chance has slipped away for St. Michael's once again. Fantastic tackle. I think it was Hawkshaw Jennings putting us, snuffing out that attack and burned it quite well here on the replay. Just see him trying to straighten up here. Look at the tackle coming in. Man and ball, brilliant tackle. Yeah, Jennings, the outside centre. St. Michael's still on the offence here. Win the ball on the line out. It's worked out nicely. Scott Penny racing away from the base of the line out. Good control placement. And Colleen fancies using the big man on the narrow side. Jack Kelly comes bursting into the line. Not held in the tackle. Rolled and got back to his feet. St. Michael's again driving up the middle, but the Belvedere tackles are coming in tough and hard. And they're keeping St. Michael's at bay. They try the little chip for the corner. How's this going to work out? Not a bad option. Needed a little bit more height on it, maybe. Good option, John, but it just doesn't work on this pitch on this surface. It doesn't come back for you. you just saw again Kelly, the ambition and the, the drive from the captain for St. Michael's there. Fending off defenders, and that's pure attitude, John. Like you can be as strong as you want and, and fast as you want, but you can't train attitude. It's just in here it is, and then that came from Kelly in abundance in the last game, and we're seeing glimpses of it today as well. St. Michael steal possession and a pe penalty conceded, pulling down at the front of the line out. It was just a silly reaction when the ball was lost. The ball, not the man. I know, let's go for the Very dangerous. He'll be he'll be reaching for that pocket soon, John. Yeah, referee just explaining. Jack Kelly came forward, asked the question about another penalty in the um, in that five meter zone. And the referee's response was a line out, their line out, Belvedere line out. So not considered a deliberate penalty on that occasion. But I think Belvedere. Might be a little bit lucky. Just a minute to go in the first half. St. Michael's have opted to take the points. And they'll find, them, they'll sound, find themselves scratching their head ahead. They're 17 3 down. When they've been playing quite well, it just hasn't oh, clicked no, no, for them. The line that was on the five, so you stay on the line. Until after the ball is kicked. Harry Byrne successful with one. He's scorer of St. Michael's only score so far. And with the amount of possession they had, they'll be very disappointed. It's not as windy as it was in the first semi-final on Tuesday, but they'll have a little bit of breeze at their back in the second half. And if Byrne can get this one, it will give them a little bit of hope. <laughs> Byrne steps up, sends it on its way. He's given it a mighty thump, but he didn't quite have the direction. Right cheers from the... Belvedere supporters, referee John Carvel blows the halftime whistle. Belvedere head to the dressing room. St. Michael's head to a huddle. A halftime score at Donnybrook. It's Belvedere College 17, St. Michael's College 3. You're very welcome back to Donnybrook. St. Michael's coaching staff just leaving the pitch. The supporters doing their best to lift them. They trail by 14 points. It's Belvedere 17, St. Michael's 3. Hard to believe that's the scoreline for the 35 minutes we watched, Aiden. Absolutely, and if you look at the amount of possession they had on the Michael side and, and territory on the pitch as well, they were in the Belvedere, camped in the Belvedere 22 on many occasions. And we've just seen a lack of cohesion, a lack of that final pass. Uh, and been clinical and don't forget Belvedere came back from 17-6 down against Black Rock to win the last quarterfinals so they're they're not they've lots of fitness to go they're not going to run out of steam this Belvedere side well great height on the restart bouncing around pop back basketball style and Belvedere after making a little bit of a mess of the restart have secured possession 
Cagney gets the box kick away. He's got a little bit too much distance on it. Harry Byrne, the safe catch. Kelly throws a huge pass infield. Good work from Machine Darling to bridge and protect the ball. And Ryan Baird caught in possession in midfield. Belvedere have turned the ball over on the St. Michael's 10 meter line. Having a look at their options, they decide to come to the narrow side. Cagney kicks towards the corner and finds a brilliant touch. Kick of the match, that from Cagney. Brilliant kick right in behind the winger, turning them around and using the pitch perfectly. Huge pressure back on Michaels once again. Here we see it again. Look at that. Beautifully placed. Off the left boot. He'll be happy with that one. The referee's blown the whistle. The channel. the channel is only that wide. I want it wider. Okay, don't close your own channel, boys. They will stay where they are. Belvedere compete, but St. Michael's come up with possession. Lovely offload out of the tackle. Ronan Kelleher coming rushing onto it, but he was stopped in his tracks. St. Michael's have created the angle for Harry Byrne. That's going to stay in play. Well gathered by Peter Marr. Hawkshaw sends one up. That's a huge kick. It's going to come down to the 22. Harry Byrne makes the catch, calls the mark. Just went about three metres too far from a Belvedere perspective. They wanted that to come down outside the 22. And this time, Byrne has found the safety of touch. And almost to halfway. That's a good clearance. See, they, they did a, a, another really good exit play. Nicely through the hands off the line out. Nice ball. And then for Byrne. And then it doesn't go out, out to touch. And now it does after the second attempt. It's those little things, John. If you, you're going to make a decision on what you're going to do and then execute it to perfection. Belvedere throw to the back and win clean ball once again Hawkshaw flat pass to Jennings well tackled by Harry Byrne coming forward out of the line Belvedere Carney charging forward the ball's gone loose it's hacked onwards referee's arm is out he's playing advantage Michaels for the knock on so Belvedere supporters think the player might have been tackled before the ball came we may see that again in just a moment it's very tight John Carvel was right up with the play This is Jennings on the tackle. Good tackle by Harry Byrne. There's the pick and go. Now just watch this one. Well, I think it was knocked on before the tackle, Aiden. Trying to make me call it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going with the ref. <laughs> ref is the king. <laughs> I need to see another angle, John. Give me seven more angles on that. Very solid scrum from St. Michael's. Colleen came on the peel, gets the pass away. Belvedere up there quickly, make tackles on Kelly. Belvedere rocking hard. Have they got over the ball and turned it over? Yes, they have. Great effort from Belvedere. They're firing an all cylinder since the half time break. McCaffrey unable to burst his way through. Pass it was a little bit risky. Ryan Baird rushed forward, couldn't get his hands to the ball. Belvedere still having a little bit of space for Hawkshaw. Has Jennings outside, gets the pass away to Jennings. Big tackle comes in, the ball's gone forward. But there's that threat from Hawkshaw once again. He spots his face and just his acceleration is brilliant. And brilliant work again. And that's just that little shimmy. Look, you'll see it. It just makes him look, look like he's going to give the pass away. Good ball placement here, quick ball. Brilliant attitude from the Belvedere Force. Look at that little shimmy. Straight through the gap. Spots the mismatch. And great tackling. Oh, Lachlan it was. Yeah, Jeff O'Loughlin saw the danger. Came racing in from his wing. Timed his tackle perfectly. We see the intent again, John, from this Belvedere side. It was Jack Kelly who made a break. 
ball was looking like it's going to be placed back in his own side, and then the Belvedere players just counter rook. Well, Byrne racing out of defence, tried the one-handed tag, pass away, he's lost possession. Jennings just one outside of him, it's Mark. Mark, <laughs> lovely step to get away from the touchline, keep the attack alive. Carney does really well as well, protecting the ball. On the tackle came in, just wasn't able to get the pass away. Belvedere now well wrapped up. Tackle called. St. Michael's have to release, but it's gone forward. Yeah, and they turn over possession. Cagney just getting caught up right there. Very difficult for him to get down again. He made a break himself. You see it just coming up. This nice little work here, nice ball placement. Cagney spots a gap like he did in the first half. Just gets caught up right there and swallowed up by the Michaels defence. Yeah, the dummy was a little bit half-hearted. He just ran straight into the big man. Scott Penny was waiting, Ryan Baird. St. Michael's captain Jack Kelly receiving some att attention. Looks like he took a bang in the right shoulder. And just checked him. He's uh, back on his feet straight away. So important now, Skeen will be knowing know this for Michaels to score next. If Belvedere score next, I don't see Michaels recovering. And, and Michael and Belvedere are growing and growing into this game. And we know they can finish so so strong. We've seen that in the last round. Well, it's a St. Michael's put into the scrum, but their number eight will have his toes or heels on the ten, five meter line in front of their own posts. They have a long way to get downfield. They've plenty of time left. They don't need to panic here. Just exit strategy, get down to the ball. We'll wait to safety and then build. Easy to say, standing up here watching. They go through the hands. Byrne got the kick away. That's under much better. pressure, but that's a great clearance. That's much, much better. Just make a decision, back that decision, and then put pressure on the on the opposition line out again. Belvedere line out on the 10 meter line in the St. Michael's half. Both sets of supporters making plenty of noise. With this line out in front of the Belvedere support. St. Michael's get up and compete for the ball. Belvedere win it though. Jennings, good straight hard run up to the 22. Goes for support. The ball is won. Surely Belvedere are going to score. McKeown will get in in the corner. And he does. What a finish from James McKeown. His second try of the game. But it was the break that from Jennings that opened it up. McKeown with a great finish. And surely it's too far now for St. Michaels to come back. Let's watch this again, Aiden. Brilliant line out. Look at that. Put down as well. Well by his forwards. And look at this. Great running. And then look at his pass coming up, so important. Winds it up, and then a little pop of McKeown there once again. And I think it's a step too far for Michaels to, to come back from. Yeah, great presence of mind again from Jennings after making the burst. He goes short here to Sexton. He might have been tempted to throw the ball wide, not commit the defender. Sexton just delayed a second. The defender had to wait, and it created that space for McKeown. And you're Second right, John. Try. You see, you see him winding up that pass. He's actually thinking about giving that straight to McKeown, and then during the pass, he decides that's the wrong option and pops it beautifully. Well, he's had to try and get his breath back as quickly as he can. Successful with three kicks from three. Well, this will really be some uh, sweet icing on the cake for the Belvedere supporters if Jennings can add this. This is his most difficult place kick so far in the game. Half a meter in from the touchline on that right hand side. Kicking into what what breeze there is. Doesn't draw the ball too much, so the angle won't be hugely difficult for him. It's not easy, that's for sure. He sent that across, but it has come across the face of the goal. Not easy. First miss from Jennings, but his side are leading by 22 points to three. Yeah, forgive him that one, John, after what he's just done. He's sided through that defence. Really is a, a great talent. Belvedere make the safe catch. Senna McNulty was underneath it. 
box kick from Hugh O'Sullivan. Good distance on it, but he's just given possession back. Harry Byrne moves it on. Jeff O'Loughlin looking to find a way around the outside, but he's lost the ball here. Counter-attack opportunity for Belvedere College. Just tackled as they crossed the halfway line. The ball moved away quickly, and a kick through. Didn't quite go the right side of the uh, winger, but it still found a good touch. So That's Belvedere brilliant will be happy enough. That's brilliant stuff from Belvedere. It's just it's played out of pace even when they're making it, it, the wrong decision they're doing it 100 percent and that's so important even if you're doing the wrong thing do it well recover the ball reset and go again and that decision to kick was the right one again pressure right back on michaels oh we've seen david shocks hulk show real threat with ball in hand we're seeing him using the boot to good effect now st michaels secure possession line out a bit scrappy Box kick sent downfield, taken by Peter Marr. O'Sullivan sees space crossfield. And as opposite number raced across and made a good catch at full stretch. Call the mark. And we'll try to just settle things down here. Back ten. They really need Jack Kelly to pull something out of the bag like he did in the last round to get them back into this game. Hasn't found touch with the clearance, Belvedere come back, they haven't found the first man with the ball, but they've kicked back, well, that might go too far, is it going to stop short, it's going to go very close, yeah, over the dead ball line, back they come. Does anybody want this? It's okay, you Sullivan, he will be disappointed with that, but the scoreboard can take it. Dead in goal, touching. Come down, Every moment counts for St. Michael's. Every possession counts. They really need to capitalize on any possession they have. Whistle blows from the referee. Guys, before the ball is coming in, the scrum is going up. You come to me, you don't step through, yeah? Here we go. Tell you, John, I'd, I'd fancy that blindside if I was a St. Michael's player because they're so strong in the scrum. Nice little turn on the, up, on the left side of the scrum. Would be nice. And McKeown is back deep as well, which allows it an attacking opportunity. the ball out to burn had a little look tempted to attack with ball in hand kelly good strength gets out of one tackle and away from another belvedere eventually stopped the st michael's captain colleen to burn a long pass now there's opportunity wide here maybe belvedere have strayed offside st michael's tried to kick through they found touch all right but they'll come back for the penalty Deal with that in a second. Black offside. Well, the defensive line from Belvedere offside. Referee stops the clock. We'll just see it here again. Belvedere up too quickly. Referee well placed. And I think that's Max Carney receiving some attention. How are we doing? And referee just over to check he's okay. Center. 13. This Come just won't do any any good for Michaels. It's just upsetting any rhythm they have, any momentum. Okay. So just getting chopped know, down 12, by breaks 13, in play. 14. It's so important. Set, set. On phase the scoreboard just looks start. a little bit too right, wide a gap. Phase rugby, yeah. So I'm not saying a particular phase. Just 19 keep it back points a bit, between yeah. the sides. Convert a try quickly with just. Maybe put a little bit of doubt in the Belvedere players' minds. Phil Warahiko watching on. He's done such a great job with Belvedere. Really, real, te a real team, John, and they play for each other. You can see it in how they play. Everybody's looking out for their teammate. They're cleaning them out. They're not just giving the, p the pass and, and, and expecting him to do all the work. They just get straight back into the game again. And Carney's been one of those guys. 
I think he's gone over. He's gone over on his ankle, maybe. They put some heavy strapping on that left ankle. They're going to give him a few minutes, see can he run it off. St. Michael's have uh, turned down the option of the shot at goal for three points. They've gone for the corner, and they've pinged it pretty close. Andy Skeen watches on. Is this the opportunity that's going to bring his team back into the game? The ball one in the line out. Oh, they don't go for the ball. It's moved away. Scott Penny coming in field. Well tackled. Jack Dunn. He's been a willing runner and ball carrier. All through the game so far. But Belvedere holding defence. In and out. Good wrap around move. They get the ball to the hooker. Stephen Judge. Sorry, no, sorry, I'll be out of your way. Belvedere. The defence looks so well organised. Ryan Baird's driven backwards. He's a big, big man, but here comes Dowling. Oh, that one drifts slightly forward. Samuel Griffin, the tight end, came bursting onto the ball. Belvedere on the back foot now. St. Michael's trying the three-man driving ball. Belvedere bring it to the ground. Peel away. Have they got to the post there? They're supposed to move. They haven't got the ball to it. Surely there's an opportunity to get over here. Jack Kelly touches down. Good finish from St. Michael's. Great patience following great defence from Belvedere. But Michael's get the try. They have a long way to go yet, but it's a good start. Well, look at this wraparound move coming again. The forwards do their work. That three-man drive you mentioned. Little, little pick here just to get rid of that defensive line and then that causes all the damage that worked by Fitzpatrick and look at this off the training paddock little wraparound move then the blocker and easy and then for Kelly yeah it was four against one at that stage Kelly finish as well Harry Byrne will have the conversion attempt and if he gets it they're back within 12 points Successful with the penalty in the first half. Missed with another penalty attempt. On the 22. Byrne has struck it well. It's hanging up a little bit. Has he got the direction? Yes, he has. That's the beauty from Harry Byrne. And the shot in the arm that his team needed. Absolutely essential from Harry Byrne. Now they need to build on that. Should they stand a chance? 12 points adrift. A lot of work to do for Michaels. Belvedere 22, St. Michaels 10. Following Jack Kelly's try and Harry Burns' conversion. Now Belvedere have to dig deep. They just need to spell down in the St. Michaels half just to take the sting out of this comeback if there is a comeback. Fitzpatrick. Racing out of the 22, Colleen gets the ball, Burn moves it on. Jesse Ardale is into the action and they're making a tackle for Belvedere. That's gone forward, it has. Just overran the pass slightly, scrum Belvedere. And Belvedere will take advantage of that, and maybe break the play again. Break the momentum. It's important that for Belvedere. You see this, he just overruns it. Big man, he's had a good game. Has Hugh Fenland, or, or sorry, Ryan Beard, it was, in fact. He's had a really good game. Good ball carrying himself and his second row teammate, Jack Dunn. Daniel McCaffrey receiving some attention. It's like a moving fire. Knee is a bit tender. There's Jesse Ardale, who's just come onto the field for Belvedere College. Good to see him on second phase ball. He's such a, a strong ball carrier. Well, central position for this scrummage. Belvedere can go either side. Cagney rolls it in. And they come to the left-hand side. No way through for Hugh Sexton. Ball out to Ardale. What can he do? Well tackled. 
Scrambled his way almost to the 22, presents the ball nicely. Oh, lovely offload out of the tackle by Brian Egan. Well, St. Michael's in quickly, Belvedere don't release, penalty conceded. Number five on his feet, good position. Yeah, he's had a really strong game, Jack Dunn. Big man, second row, getting down on, doing the, the donkey work on the ground. And that's a good kick as well. Yeah, Harry Byrne finds the touch. Look at that big man using his body as a lever. Free just stopping sure play. Quick release, yeah? okay, well, Barry Fitzpatrick, I think, uh, getting some attention. Early, yeah. Jack Dunn that's down. You good? Oh, he's okay now. Oh, a dislocated finger or something like that. He did some quick work. He's back at his feet. St. Michael's line out on halfway. They go to the back. They win clean ball. Burn moving it on. Nice little reverse pass. Eno Kelly, though, couldn't creep through the gap. Belvedere defence holding firm on that occasion. Five attackers made, let him go. Ryan Baird into a huge contact, but managed to keep the ball alive. This is Kelleher. Really is an athletic prop forward, but got back to his feet after the tackle. The tackle was made, you must release. Holding. It's great work by McCaffrey. Here we see a nice flat pass on the verge of being a forward one, and then McCaffrey straight back to his feet. And well, Jennings has sliced that one badly in field, taken by Kelly. Two metres out from his own try line, races to the 22, moves the ball in field. Well moved on. St. Michael's in loose field play here. Can they create something? They need a little bit of magic. No way through on that occasion. Baird moves the ball on. Belvedere rush up. Get the tackle in. The ball bubbles loose. St. Michael's first to it. Away, right. Hold. Oh, it's fast and furious stuff. St. Michael's back with possession. Ardale up to make a big tackle on Jack Dunn. Still St. Michael's hold possession. Byrne moves it on. St. Michael's have numbers, but no space. Back they come the other direction. Oh, lovely pop-up pass. Samuel Griffin racing away, but Belvedere got back to make the tackle. There's their space wide here for St. Michael's. Fitzpatrick, the number eight. Tackle by Hawkshaw. St. Michael's moving the ball around side to side, but struggling to get out of the half. Is there an opportunity here? Was that a bit reckless? Harry Byrne to the rescue for St. Michael's. Belvedere told to let the ball go. They You're don't listen to the referee. Penalty. You're off your feet. Just creaking a little bit now, Belvedere. Stay up. They've been so good in defence, though. Belvedere. A couple of players okay. down. Maybe a little bit of cramp sneaking in. We'll just have a look at this. Samuel Griffin coming racing out of the ball. Fabulous tackle. St. Michael's making a couple of changes. Milo O'Donoghue coming on, Andrew Courtney as well. One change in the front row, one in the second row. Can the fresh legs make a difference? Guys, we gotta go. If they can't, if they can't continue, we can make replacements, yeah? Okay. All the players back on their feet. Penalty for going off the feet. Harry Byrne has a long way to go to the touchline. Can't get too much distance downfield, but ups for safety and gets it past the 10 meter line. St. Michael's need to be patient, Aiden. Absolutely, and when they are, they're good, John. They, they can really put the ball through the phases, but they just not, not, not rush things and not panic. Not give the pass that isn't on, just go through and stick to the game plan. Well, the ball bobbles around. The referee looks like he's happy with it. Did go forward, but it was a Belvedere hand. Penny racing onto it, gets out of one tackle. On he goes. Rolls to get the ball back on the St. Michael's side. Harry Burns 
moves it on to Eno Kelly. Kelly. Jack Kelly, the fullback. Kelly has scored a try. Can he get over for another great tackle by Peter Marr? The St. Michael's within five metres. Byrne moves it on. Penny tackled and driven backwards. Eight metres from the line. Harry Byrne moves it wide once again. St. Michael's are lining up here. Can they execute? Ardale, what an important tackle from him. On comes St. Michael's. That's the five metre line. Killeen has a little bit of a look. They're going to keep it among the big men. Run on Kelleher driving down the narrow side. Have they got over here? They're very close to the line. They have got in. Touchdown. St. Michael's get the try. And well deserved, Aiden. We've got a game back in our hands. But Patrick it is in the end. Kelly did all the damage. We said we needed to see him do something amazing to get this team back in the game, and he surely did. It was a numbers game. Brilliant tackle from Myrodale. They were defensively down in numbers. There's Dowling again, big carry from him. Good clean out coming up. Nice sweep back down the blind side. Good decision by the scrum half. Nice pick and go. And that man Keller again doing some severe damage. Yeah, the pick from Fitzpatrick got across the line. Here we'll see Kelly's break. Look at this. Look at the strength of the man. Nice little show and go. Bumps off. And that's the strength we talked about. Such an athlete. Good ball placement in the end. Well, it's a try in each of three rounds now for Barry Fitzpatrick. Conversion attempt coming from Harry Byrne. Sends that on its way. It's not looking too bad. Just outside the upright, so the margin is seven. Convert to try. Get St. Michael's level. Couldn't script it better, John. Seven points in the difference. A repeat of last year's final in the balance. Ross Gray, of course, Matt Belvo. Belvedere College 22, St. Michael's 15. Belvedere have shown their tenacity in earlier rounds. They're going to have to dig deep here. St. Michael's bringing in David Ryan and Peter O'Byrne in the back line. Jack Dunn once again driving into big tackles. Peter O'Byrne moving the ball away, the substitute scrum half. Was there an opportunity here? St. Michael's good work to get the ball out of the tackle. Scott Penny doesn't look like the biggest man, but he just always seems to make those extra few, made, few meters. St. Michael's holding on to possession. A little bit easier each time. They did all the damage in the first half against Terenure. And the ball thrown all the way wide here. Kelleher, Hawkshaw across to make the tackle. Good clear, good support. Burn got the ball away quickly. Ryan moves it on. St. Michael's up and intercept. Soft chance, Belvedere with McKeown. Is he going to get a hat trick? McKeown is going to race in under the posts. And out of nothing, James McKeown gets the try, has it sent Belvedere College into the final. The supporters think it has. And a lapse of concentration from St. Michael's. They had numbers. McKeown picked the ball. It was his only option, really. Watched it all the way. Have a look again, Aiden. And here it is through the hands, beautifully through the hands. They were in trouble. McKeown saw it. 3v1 was on. Three players outside McKeown had he not intercepted. Fantastic play by him, and he's just got his team into a final. Well, he could have looked so foolish if the pass hadn't come, but he went for it, committed it. And look at that for pace. The conversion is good while we're watching the touchdown. And St. Michael's, after battling back to within seven, find themselves 14 points behind. And you feel sorry for them. They were looking good, John. It looked a little bit like Belvedere's. Uh, fitness was in question, and Michael's coming into the game through the likes of Pe Penny. He's had a fantastic game, and of course, that man Jack Kelly, a full back again. But it's really a case of undoing the damage on the scoreboard at this late stage in the game. Harry Byrne hangs it up, great height on that one, good chase up. 
Belvedere under pressure, but they have secured possession just outside the 22. It's so a time for cool heads here. Hugh O'Sullivan is acting as the scrum half. Gets great height on the box kick. Well gathered by Michael Heaney. Peter Marr was up quickly to make the tackle. Peter O'Byrne gets the ball away. A little bit of space opening up for David Ryan. Belvedere defence gets across. Ryan has made it to the 22. Belvedere straight offside here. The pass doesn't quite find the hands. Burned as well to tidy it up. Lovely time pass away to Kelleher. Belvedere, three men it takes to bring the loose head down. Byrne gets it away once again. Harry Byrne moves it on. Dowling was another opportunity for an intercept. This time they're a bit more careful now. The pass goes into the hands of McKeown, but Belvedere were all offside across the defensive line. They concede the penalty. St. Michael's, you think, have to go over to the corner here. Yeah, they have to get on their bikes. They have to make a decision fast. Every second counts at this stage. But Harry that McKeown again was hovering. He was looking for that intercept, and he almost got it. Well, oh, Harry Byrne left that one very precariously close to the corner flag. It's been given. Interestingly, John, if, if Belvo progress to the final, they will need to be well versed at defending these situations against Ross Cray. Ross Cray's mall, fantastic both last year and again this year. And a real test for Belvedere. I've got front row down in the middle of the road over there. We've got to stop it, yeah? Keen Galvin is receiving some attention. Pretty much. Yeah. Jake Robinson has come in and placed a Hugh Fanlon in the second row for Belvedere. They'll make a, chub in the, a change in the front row as well, I think. Yeah, number. Moving up. Have to get a man off the bench. Sam Osborne coming in in place. There's a long way to go to get to that scrum. There's confirmation on your screen of that change. That'll be his warm-up done, John, across the pitch, straight into the action. At a vital stage in the game. St. Michael's rise, it's gone awkwardly. Can Ardyle get to it? Dive to catch it. And he's knocked it on. Referees decided it wasn't deliberate. I think he made a fair attempt to catch it. Yeah, he was genuinely going for that one. You could see this. But just lapse of concentration, bad. And, and ref said it to, to Michaels in the first half, don't take your own space. And they did it there, and they overstepped it, and the ball was on his wrong hand in, in the end in the line out. Well, they still have possession, though. Scrummage here. They're ignoring the blind side. Blind side. I guess they know they need a score near the posts. Um, at least give Harry Byrne a reasonable chance with a place kick. They've got to get two converted tries, and they're running out of time. Getting in touch with Asi to keep that find up, please. Yeah, that doesn't give you a free one either. All right. You need to get your feet underneath you, but you're too far back. It's fine. It's fine. Yes, sir. No, bit, no, no. We're, we're going to be too far away. A bit closer. Oh, no. Good. Close. Oh, crouch. Nine. Oh, what can St. Michael's do here? Stay on the scrum, stay on the scrum. And Byrne rolls into the scrum, picked off the base. It's Patrick pops the pass, so Byrne runs cross field. Harry Byrne out to Kelly. Little pop reverse pass from Kelly. Back in field to Dan O'Donovan. Is there space here? Can Fitzpatrick almost slipped hold, away? Hold. Brave tackle by Senan McNulty. St. Michael's edging closer and closer to that try line. We're going to be in for a grandstand finish here, I think. Have they got over? Good clear out. The ball is there. Ball goes to Jack Dunn. And Dunn is it. He's got over. If it is, he deserves his try. His ball carrying has been phenomenal this afternoon for St. Michael's. Harry Byrne. Screaming for the kicking tee, just getting a bit of water in as well. There's just less than five minutes left. He needs to just tap that over. Come on. Need to get back into this game. They'll have four minutes or so left. Worried faces on the supporters. Harry Byrne has made no mistake from close range. We're back to a seven-point game at Donnybrook. And look at this Dunn coming up. No better man. Coming the man, coming the hour. Look at this, the right man, big reach. Referee well placed. All he has to do is get to the line. And he got the ball down. He deserved that, Jack Dunn. 
Well, Andy Skeen knows his side. Have a lifeline here. Seven points would get them level on a potential replay. They need to deal with the restart. Fitzpatrick, safe catch. Good chase by Belvedere, though. They keep him inside the 22. Will St. Michael's run from deep. It looks like that's the option. The pass goes astray. Dowling. Good handoff. Great strength. From the blindside flanker. Oh, Burns sweeps the ball infield. Burn, another opportunity, another intercept. And St. Michael's have committed an error under their own post. They've copped up possession, and that is surely that. Hugh O'Sullivan, ever alert, gets in under the posts. And he well, read it all the way, John. Look at this. He saw the width of the players too deep. And it's a form of defence as well, you know. Mike, you have to be good at intercept and both O'Sullivan and McKeown were exceptional today. And that's confirmed it, John. You can put a rubber stamp on that repeat of last year's final, Belvedere and Ross Gray. Well, Belvedere scored five tries against Newbridge in the first round as Connor Jennings slots that one between the uprights. They scored five against Black Rock in the replay game. And they've scored five here against St. Michael's, who would bet against them in the final. But they'll face a formidable opposition in Cistercian College, Ross Gray. That's what panic does as well, John. You know, when you leave, leave it too, too late, you end up throwing those type of passes and risking the result of an, an intercept pass. And we've seen two of them. Belvedere, 36. St. Michael's, 22. And the clock is ticking towards the final two minutes of the game. Belvedere playing sensible rugby now. Keep it tight. Oh, almost <laughs> an error themselves. The player coming back almost got in the way of the pass, but this is sensible stuff from Belvedere in the circumstances. Heat up the clock. Hugh O'Sullivan up from fullback playing now at scrum half, calling the shots. It's really good play, John. They know exactly what they're doing side to side. Not really, it's not about position on the pitch, it's not about the gain line, it's just about maintaining possession and whiling down that clock. Oh, the pick and run around the outside on that occasion. Another pick and go again. St. Michael's can only put in the tackles and hope there's an error, hope they get their hands on the ball. You don't need one off runners though now. It's just controlled, nice and slow. And the support to the ball carriers, excellent from Belvedere. Great work to get to the clear out. This is a very, very controlled passage of play. They're getting a little bit close to the touchline maybe now. The foot comes in. The touch judges flag stays down. The ball bobbling around loose. Somehow comes back on the Belvedere side. That's a penalty. Yeah, I thought that it. touch judge got on his mic eventually. I thought he ate a foot in the touch in touch as well when he played it. But the penalty is uh, the preferred decision for St. Michael's. Harry Byrne tried to spin that into touch, got it off the outside of the boot, hasn't got it downfield too much. A pure pride play at this stage, John. It's been a brave fight back by St. Michael's, but just errors with their passing. Coughed up possession to concede 14 points, and that's the margin between the teams. St. Michael's driving on, they're up to the 22, the ball is available. Boot to it, another penalty. Side entry, 20, no! The clock has gone you red. Gone before the ball came down. Uh, no, you do not. No time. no time. No No time for touch, no. Hold. Well, they have to keep the ball in play, Harry Byrne pops it. Release the blue. Jack Dunn stopped on the uh, 22 meter line. Dowling moves the ball on to Max Kennedy. O'Byrne into midfield. Andrew Courtney moves it on. Oh, lovely feat. Great work by David Ryan. Out to the captain, Kelly. He'll show the ball and go from Kelly. Gets up to the 22 meter line. 
Belvedere, Noether on the way through to a final. Is there an opportunity for St. Michael's to get a consolation score? There may be. Whoa, what a tackle. Great little break by David Ryan. St. Michael's come on there, Fitzpatrick. Oh, the big number eight just couldn't step away from the tackle. Penalty against Belvedere, they're going off your feet. St. Michael's will get a chance to get a late score, perhaps. Off your feet. Yes, you can. Tapped and taken by O'Byrne, O'Byrne thrown to Harry Byrne. Belvedere still getting men there to make the tackles. Hulk show the at half on that occasion. Here comes St. Michael's once again. Luke Duffy driving towards the posts. Can't quite get over. Belvedere came through. Have they stolen it? They have, and the ball is hacked away. John Carville blows the final whistle, and Belvedere College have prevailed. A little bit fortunately, maybe, but they looked the better organised of the sides, and they played with great passion, Aidan. Absolutely great passion and great teamwork. They really, really earned this, and they kept out the Michael, Michael's power so so well the defense was well organized and i know that they, they they look like intercepts but that comes for inner defense people are talking to the guy outside and that's the teamwork i'm talking about every aspect of play when they give the pass they're looking what can they do to make it easier for their teammate good ball placement for their scrum half all the way through this team it permeates the team absolute teamwork and well well deserving of the final yeah, the uh, St. Michael's a brave effort by them. They trail by 22 points to three at one stage. Twice they got back to within seven points, and twice intercepts was yeah. a killer. And, and, and that's the thing. If you leave things too late in the game, you end up making passes that you wouldn't make. You end up panicking a little bit, and you end up having to force those passes, and that's exactly what happened, and they paid the price. Two intercept tries. Well, let's go down to pitch side. Ben Egan has the Belvedere coach, Phil Wurihiko. Thanks, John. Joining me now is Phil Werehiko. Phil, back in another final. You must be delighted with that win. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've uh, we, we pencilled this as one of the. You know, the, this was a minimum for us. You know, was getting through into the finals, particularly after last year, having a number of guys. You know, they worked hard. They knew what it took to get back here. Obviously, this game was a, a lot tougher than than we probably um, thought it would be after, the, particularly after the Rock game. The way St. Michael's came back at you there in the second half. Did you, were you afraid that it was going to get away from you at any stage? Um, well, it wasn't much uh, afraid. I think we just had to adjust. You know, they, they did spread the ball well uh, throughout the game. And as the weather started to dry, you could see their passing was, was uh, they executed that fairly well. And we had to adjust to those passes. I thought defensively we were very, very good, particularly in the first half. Um, second half again, because the conditions were as they were, we were able to you know, defend fairly well. The second half, the, the ball started to dry. Execution by Michaels has become a lot more you know, effective, and, but we had to just adjust, and we thought we did that well. well. Thanks for talking to us, Phil. We'll talk to you before the final. We're now also joined by Brian Egan, the winning captain. Brian, back in another final, you must be delighted. Yeah, no, we're delighted with that. Really tough game. Credit to Michaels, you know, they threw everything at us. They're a great side, and uh, it was a really close game, so we're delighted to be where we are now. A shot at redemption now in the final. It's Ross Cray again. Yeah, I suppose if you want to call it that, you can, but to us it's just another game. Another game where we need to nail down process. There's a lot to work on from the last game. You know, it wasn't a particularly great performance, so we need to build from here. Very well done today, Brian. Thanks very much. Cheers. Back up to you now, John. Well, Brian Egan, a very happy captain. There's the Belvedere College squad in their huddle. Final score at Donnybrook. It's Belvedere College 36, St. Michael's 22. The drama. The passion. The Bank of Ireland Leinster School Senior Cup Final. Live on Satanta